everyone, it's John from CoolSmartphone.com. As we move into 2016, a number of the Cool Smartphone writers wanted to put down on record what their technology highlight of 2015 was. And so we decided to put this short video together, each of us explaining what our favourite bit of kit was. And for me, it's easy. It's the PS4. And I appreciate I'm probably a bit late to the party on this, but I used to be a gamer several years ago. And when my son was born, I put it on hold for a while. Now my son's a bit older, I've got back into gaming, and it was the PS4 that opened it up to me. I was really impressed with how not only the technology has improved, but the way in which that technology has, is used. So the PS4 offers a great community-focused gaming. You can invite friends into games, you can form parties, you can talk to each other on microphones, you can save your video, you can automatically upload your videos to YouTube, you can stream your games live. All of this was just blew me away completely, especially with top games like Star Wars Battlefront, which I'm finding absolutely incredible, such an immersive experience. So for me, my highlight is easy. It's the PS4. It's on full beauty mode and still, still, nah. It's not going to get rid of my extra chins, is it? Huh? <laughs> ah, we'll edit this bit out, don't worry. Dad, it's actually know. a video. Is it videoing? Is, yeah. Are we filming? Oh, crikey, hang on a minute. Right, I've got to come up with some of my highlights of 2015 in the computer, in the mobile world. So um, I think this year for me, it's been um, going to China, having a look at what Huawei are doing because they've got a lot of new gadgets and Hi. ideas. Hi. It's been my son sort of getting involved in some of these geeky videos that I do and they're recording stuff. Yeah. And also um, the next sort of big thing that I'm looking forward to testing. Is, is this sort of stuff. Now this is the drive zone from Vodafone and uh, this will basically look at your car, check where it is and you can connect to your car using that. We've also got this which is the Huawei um, find zone and this is a GPS tracker so you can put it into somebody's bag or on the coat and uh, that will basically basically um, track them wherever they go and you can log into this portal and see where they are and it's really good for safety reasons and it connects to the Vodafone network as well as obviously GPS. Um, my phone of the year would have to be the HTC One A9 um, which HTC still haven't let me keep so I have to go and buy one of those. Uh, I do like the Huawei uh, or rather the Nexus 6P very good phone for the money and um, I'm looking forward to next year and we'll see what that um, unveils um, but yeah, overall this year it's been the new connected devices the internet of things I think is really starting to sort of explode now and you can see that mobile networks are trying new things with EE's pet tracker system and Vodafone with their uh, connected gadgets like the ones I've just shown you so it'll be an interesting year in 2016 and we'll see how that develops and see what other ideas are come up with because it's not just about phones anymore so, um, yeah, that's been my highlights for 2015. Hiya, this is um, just my tech highlights of the year for 2015. So, I've been really impressed with the emergence of wearable tech, um, as shown by my pebble here. Um, people said 2015 was going to be the year of the wearable. I was a little bit dubious about this at the beginning of the year. However, um, wearable tech has started to permeate into the mainstream so wearable tech is number one the second one that I've been really really impressed with is the emergence of um, low cost but high spec handsets um, as epitomized by the OnePlus X that I recently got my hands on I mean this is a 200 pound handset it's got an AMOLED screen, it's got 3 gig RAM, it's got 16 gig expandable memory, and it's dual SIM, but the actual design and build quality of it is um, of a handset that you would associate with being much, much higher. Um, other things that I've been really impressed with over the course of the year is uh, Windows 10, actually. Windows 10 has been a big thing for me. Um, as someone who uses a Surface, um, 
I have seen the development and the growth of Windows 10. I've been really, really pleased with what it's capable of doing. Um, I'm yet to test a Windows 10 phone. I'm hoping to get a 950 XL um, either just before the end of the year or into the new year. Um, but I really think Windows 10 has got what it needs to now move on to the next step for Windows and hopefully we will see that um, in the new year. But um, I hope you have enjoyed listening to me on the podcast and reading my reviews on callsmartphone.com and I uh, hope you continue to do so in the new year. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Cheers. Bye. Hi, I'm Matteo, Chief Pixel Density Enthusiast at CoolSmartphone.com. I'm recording this video to tell you what I think the highlight of the world of technology, consumer electronics, and CoolSmartphone.com was during the year of 2015. 2015 was a fun year. I think the real highlight was myself, Matteo Doni, joining CoolSmartphone.com as Chief Pixel Density Enthusiast. Joking aside, I think the highlight of 2015 was the advent of the inexpensive mid-range Chinese smartphone. Devices which range from five to five and a half inch screen size offer usually octa-core processors, a couple of gigabytes of RAM, plenty of storage expandable, and a couple of uh, SIM slots. These devices, such as the Meizu M1 Note, the Meizu M2 Note, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2, the Lenovo K3 Note, have been a very interesting area uh, positioned in the mid-range mid segment, which offer amazing value for money to customers. Whereas in 2014, these devices were very popular in Asia, but never really affected Western markets, I think these have started to take on in Europe and the US, and I think that they'll carry on to grow, growing in 2016. Uh, I say this as, as a true believer, and to prove my point, I've actually recorded this video on a Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. So that's my idea, that's my thoughts for 2015. Uh, thanks for listening. And Hi guys, uh, my name is Majid. I'm one of the uh, relatively new writers to Cool Smartphone and uh, my highlights of 2015 are number one, I think the Nexus 6P is a fantastic device. Um, it is almost everything that any, any geek would want, you know, stock Android, uh, good camera, uh, latest updates. At the same time, it's a very well built, good consumer product as well at a good price. And uh, if we could, if there was more availability, I think it would be flying off the shelves. Uh, a second highlight is Android photography this year has been very, very good. I mentioned the 6P, the G4, and the Galaxy S6. You know, all have fantastic cameras. I'm especially pleased with the S6 uh, camera, mainly because I've got one and I used it when I went to abroad recently on holiday and I got some fantastic shots uh, with it. Um, and considering how disappointed I was with the S5's camera uh, last year, uh, I'm very pleased with the way that Android photography in general is going. It would have been nice if the HTC uh, had also stepped up to the plate, but again, their problems are well documented. And I think the last, and I think the last highlight that I want to mention, um, which I'm not entirely sold on smartwatches yet, but I think it's really good that the smartwatches that we've got this year from Huawei, uh, LG, um, the Gear 2, they actually look like things you want to put on your wrist and you actually think you look pretty good okay in a nerd kind of way pretty cool um with them on uh so in short those are the things that i think have been really cool in 2015 uh thanks a lot for listening and uh, happy new year hi everyone my technical highlight for the year that's just gone has to be the sony uh, xperia z5 compact uh, once again sony has done a brilliant job 
of providing a top of the range phone in a compact body, uh, which is both light uh, as well as powerful and uh, also with an outstanding battery life. Uh, I've uh, tested it uh, over several weeks and months now uh, and uh, as you may have seen on our website um, there has been a joint review of both the Z5 Compact and the Z5 uh, and as you can see from the review um, it's been well received by myself. Uh, hopefully Sony now carries on with the brilliant work that they've done with the Z5 or the Compact series and will deliver another outstanding version in the years to come, uh, which will hopefully uh, keep up with their mantra of delivering high quality and high feature set on a compact body size, unlike other manufacturers. Uh, along with the uh, new phone, which has also got um, NFC capability, hopefully we'll soon be able to get uh, Android Pay, which is uh, looking like a brilliant feature. Uh, which will then give us a, even greater capabilities from the phone uh, for use such as on the underground in London uh, where Apple Pay have stolen the march already. Um, so that's it for me in terms of uh, my uh, technology highlights and the Sony Z5 uh, as I said earlier a brilliant phone and uh, hopefully will uh, serve me well over the next year or so um, and we'll see what Sony come out with in the years to come. Thanks a lot. Okay, so it's Pete from Cool Smartphone, um, quite a new author uh, uh, of the site. So my highlight, um, as well as becoming an author for the site, is the recognition from manufacturers actually making an effort to make sure their handsets are safe. Um, vulnerabilities and weaknesses are a massive concern. And if we're going to start using services like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay and so forth, we need to be a far, far safer. Um, I think this year, for all the things that have been in the news, we've recognised what's going on. So, not the most exciting of um, highlights, but one of the big highlights. The second highlight for me is wearables. Wearables have changed a lot. And I've been holding back, like a watch, you may notice. I've held back on this one because we're waiting for something different. And I think blocks, when the blocks watch comes available next year, I think that's going to change the whole dynamic. Um, we're not going to be dependent on what Apple are churning out. I think we're going to see a lot more brands come out next year as well, so it's going to be very, very exciting. So, kind of a highlight and kind of a prediction for next year, so very, very exciting. And hopefully, the highlight for you guys is reading some of my forensic reports and uh, <laughs> security news reports as well. And more to come next year. Hi everyone, this is Gavin from gavinsgadgets.com and today I'm just going to tell you what I think was my highlights of 2015. It was the year of the Snapdragon 810 where flagships overheated, so that wasn't a great start to be honest. And it actually got better from there. You had some quite novel phones like the Samsung Galaxy S6, S6 Edge Plus and the Note 5, which unfortunately for some reason didn't come to Europe, but that's the way it goes. You also had great phones that I really enjoyed, the LG G4 and the LG V10 with their manual controls, especially the V10 with manual controls on video as well as stills. And it was a great year all round. You had the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus with 3D Touch and Apple Pay comes to the UK. So all in all, I was quite pleased with 2015. I also think 2015 was the year when smartphone cameras really took on a new lease of life. I'm recording this on my iPhone 6S Plus. In a second I'll show you the rig that I've got to actually record this. But really it's the year where the majority of both flagship offering incredible picture quality and video quality and even cheaper smartphones to be able to take good photos. I hope you like the backdrop of Dartmoor behind me and that uh, you all have a great start to 2016 and I wish you all more season's greetings. My favourite game was Jurassic Park Builder.